So children, yes, we had been like uh, doing this chapter earlier, up till page number 77, we have already read. And uh, before we start continuing the chapter from page number 78, uh, I'm going to just brief up the chapter in a few words. Like basically, we are going to focus now upon like how the authorities or what kind of mistakes the authorities are going to commit, what mistakes they have committed. So first of all, we must need, we need to know that uh, uh, these authorities, they kept on ignoring all, everything, including Ivan's knowledge about the uh, invigilator and microphone. So Ivan's knew that somebody, some minister was coming to invigilate him. And uh, he just uh, confirmed it from uh, Mr. Jackson. And uh, this Mr. Jackson and his other counterpart, he didn't even realize, they didn't even uh, become alert about his knowledge about this invigilator. Uh, then this Evans also knew that he had been bugged up and that was also something very, very uh, strange that he knew this and uh, authorities didn't mind how he knew this. And then they kept on allowing him to do whatever he wanted. So they, authorities became emotionally, you know, uh, they were emotional fools. That's why they allowed Evans to go with the bobbled head, which was of red and white colored. So they, first Jackson asked him to remove that hat. And uh, when Evans told him that it was a lucky charm for, for him, then uh, Jackson allowed him to go with that hat. So that was very wrong when there is some, some rule, then that rule should have been adhered to even by, the, by Jackson. So these uh, authorities, you know, they kept on becoming overconfident. Even the governor kept on thinking uh, time and again that he was overdoing the things that they were becoming theatrical. It was uh, like treating events like a, like a school boyish, this and that. But the fact was that they should have remembered it, that events was not something, uh, was not an easy case to be tackled. They could have remembered that events was a very intelligent person and could outwit them at any moment or in any way. And they forgot all those capabilities of Einstein, that is events, and, uh, and, and uh, gave scope to events that he could outwit them very easily. So the biggest problem, biggest mistake of the authorities was that they were emotional fools. Okay, Evans could not beat them uh, with any weapon or with anything else, but Evans was able to beat them only because these people allowed themselves to be emotionally fooled. Right? So now let's see what happens on page number 78. So here it is now. So the exam has started. Right? When the exam has started, remember children, you people know also that uh, the room is bugged up, that there is a microphone in the examination room. So whatever anyone speaks in that examination room, governor is listening to that. So, and Evans knows this, that there is a, there is a microphone. So Evans, the one who is already very intelligent, whom these authorities also call as Einstein. So they forgot that uh, um, Evans will not take advantage of that very thing which had been kept there to trap him. So Evans kinds of, you know, people, Evans kinds of criminals, they don't get trapped very easily, but rather they victimize the authorities only because of their wit. And that is what happened. So the microphone which had been installed in the cell to listen to whatever he was saying so that he could not be able to plan his escape, the same thing Evans used for his own advantage. Because he spoke those things which distracted the governor and other, you know, authorities. And uh, that those distractions helped Evans escape, remember. So he was so intelligent. So now McLeary was uh, speaking uh, the name of the paper, it was 0211. Then he made him write the index number 313. And then he made him write the center number 271A, right? So these are digits McLeary was speaking out to Evans. So you can also make out like uh, if the, if <clears throat> Evans was not at all serious about paper, then why is he 
why will we be so much you know careful about these things okay we already have got the clues that mcleary might not have been the real mcleary it might not have been the real invigilator it might have been a fake invigilator how do we know this yesterday we discussed it out because the one bag which mcleary had when he left the flat was there we read out all the details in that bag and later on when mcleary reached uh this uh, cell this oxford prison there when his bag was searched out there was one thing which was not there when he left the flat that was a rubber tube so what from where did this rubber tube come and uh, this rubber tube was something with which mcleary was also allowed to come inside the examination hall it was also something objectionable and uh, mcleary again emotionally befooled these authorities and told him like uh, he needed that to rubber tube to sit on right so the point is like uh, now afterwards when the paper is going to start then these are the judges he is speaking then mcleary now it is 9:20 am i'm now going to evans is not going to stay in here is he so here evans is talking about uh, stephens he wants that stephen should not stay with him i don't know about that i uh, then uh, stephens mr jackson given me strict instructions to how am i supposed to concentrate on my exam with someone breathing down my neck christ sorry i didn't mean so ivan objects to the presence of stephens in the same examination room so why does ivan uh, you know protest because he thinks that he will not be able to concentrate on his paper but as uh, readers we know that he was uh, least bothered about clearing the paper but as authorities governor and stephen and jackson should have realized that uh, whatever might happen they must not give this man you know a little chance any chance to do something on of his own so again these authorities are going to be emotional fools and they will ask governor will ask stephen to come out of the examination room the governor reached for the uh, phone jackson Ah, oh, good. Get Stephen out of that cell, will you? I think we are perhaps overdoing the things. As you wish, sir. The governor heard the exchanges in the cell, heard the door clank once more, and heard McLeary announce that the examination had begun at last. Got it? So now Stephen, who was already inside, who was earlier in the examination room, now he was asked to come out by the governor. The reason you might have got to know. it was 9:25 am and there was a great calm so paper started at 9:25 and there was great calm at 9:40 am the examinations board ran through so at 9:40 the governor got a call from the examination and the assistant secretary with special responsibilities for the modern languages asked to speak to the governor right so who was speaking on phone it was the assistant secretary with special responsibility for modern languages asked to speak to the governor the examination had already started no doubt uh, a quarter of an hour ago yes well there was a correction slip which some fool had forgotten to place in the examination package very brief could the governor please so children have you got it at 9:40 the uh, examination uh, the assistant secretary of examination he called up governor to request him to pass over a correction slip to the examination got it so the way when your exams are conducted then if there is some mistake then the uh, mistake is rectified okay that correction is made in the classes so it is that kind of correction slip which has come so the request was to the governor that if you if he could please Yes, of course. I'll put you straight through to Mr. Jackson in the evening. Hold, hold the line a minute. So the governor made the examination uh, assistant secretary of examination uh, to talk to Jackson in the evening. Was this the sort of thing the governor had feared? So was this the sort of thing the governor had feared? Was the phone call a fake? Some signal? Some secret message? So. governor was not actually really a big fool so he also doubted he had a doubt like maybe uh, this kind of call 
this kind of call from the examination can be a fake one. Maybe this was a signal for events to escape. Okay, so if you think that the, the call is can be fake, what can you do to check whether it is fake or not? Can you tell me, Shruti? If it's a landline number, and if you think that this call is fake, what would you do to check whether it is a fake call or not? I'm not talking about the phone call, I'm talking uh, mobile call. I'm talking about the landline call. If you get a call on landline, but you are scared that it might be a fake call, how will you make out that it is, whether it is fake call or not? Have you got any idea? Yes or no? If you've got any idea, please raise hand. If you get a phone call, suppose your friend calls you from, from landline, but the voice doesn't seem to be hers. You have a doubt that maybe it's not her, my friend, it was somebody else. How will you check whether it was a fake call or not? What will you do? You will call back. You will call back that you will because you will have the phone number of that friend okay you will call back your friend in the from the same phone number in the landline servant uh, remember that we have in the earlier times in the landlines we did not used to have the phone number in front of us in the mobiles we come to know like from which number the call has come but in the landline it didn't used to happen earlier so if, in order to check whether the phone call was fake or not you will call back by a number you have with you. So if you will call back with the number you have of your friend, if your friend picks up the phone and says that, yes, I was there, then you will be sure like, yes, your friend is calling you. And right now the call was going on, right? So this governor will also be, will also check whether the phone call is fake or not. And when he will check, then he will find that the call is going engaged. It means that the number is engaged, that means it is a real call. Got it? So what might have happened? One thing is there, like this is a fake call. One thing is there. Fake call means, but it has come from the examination only. Then how come that the examination department is with events? Again, uh, I'm, I, I can't help you giving you the clues because the whole, even this events have got his people, his men in the examination board also. His men are there. How did he have his men working in the examination board? Because uh, if Evans is that influential that the coach, that the tutor who used to come to him, he might have passed, he might have helped him, he might have helped him have all those, you know, people in examination board also being with him. Okay. So if we talk about corruption, uh, then it is all around. Okay. Once uh, you, you just need to have the money to get the things in your favor and it happens wherever the mor morality is poor. Okay, anyways, let's see this. Was this the sort of thing the governor had feared? Was the phone call a fake, some signal, some secret message, but he could check on that immediately. He dialed the number of the examination board, but heard only the staccato beeps of a line engaged. So what he heard when he called that number, he found that the number was engaged. But then the line was engaged, wasn't it? Yes, not very intelligent that. So he was like, uh, he, he was able to make out like it was not really very intelligent on his part to doubt like that. But the point is that yes, it's not a matter whether you are intelligent or not, but as a detective, as a governor of a criminal, you know, you need to be alert. It's not about becoming, being smart or not. It's about being alert. Okay, but here, these kinds of people, these kinds of authorities, you know, they take the things upon as being, as whether they are intelligent or not. Will you please stop writing a V while, Mr. Evans? So will you please stop writing a V while, Mr. Evans? Uh, and listen carefully. So the, uh, Ms. McLeary, you know, made Evans stop writing and listen to him. Candidates offering German 0211 should note the, note the following correction. On page three, 
line 15 the fourth word should read golden not golden and the whole phrase will therefore be read zum golden lion not zum golden golden lion so the correction is only in the word golden and not golden. Only only n is to be added. So he is asked to make correction on page number so and so, and the correction is like about the word golden nun. Okay, golden lion. The word is got it. So you people might have been able to make out like it was not a very big correction, but the correction was there, and some word has been spoken up golden and lion. The governor listened and smiled. He had taken German in the sixth form himself, and he remembered all about the agreements of adjectives. And so did McLeary. By the sound of things, for the minister's pronunciation was most impressive. But what about Evans? He probably didn't know what an adjective was. So here, governor is once again becoming proud of himself, or you can say overconfident. Even he was able to make out like uh, this was a mistake of the use of correct adjective. So he, he, because he had done this kind of German up till the grade of sixth, and he thought, thought like even McLeary also knew this because the like accent was very impressive. But he, he wondered if Evans had any idea of what an adjective was. So the point is that even governor knows, even governor has an idea that Evans might not be knowing anything about German. Then why is he so, uh, you know, why doesn't he become very serious about the security of events? The phone rang again, the magistrate's court. They needed a prison van and a couple of prison officers, remand case. And within two minutes, the governor was wondering whether that could be a hoax. Hoax is again a fake call. He told himself not to be so silly. His imagination was beginning to run right. So, Again, there was a phone call, and this was the call from the magistrate court. The court wanted a van and a couple of prison officers. Okay, the magistrate wanted that the governor should send a van and a few prison officers to the court. Now, if uh, they would send a van and a few prison officers to the court, uh, again, it could be a fake call this you know, governor wanted. But he again thought like he was becoming so silly. So, Evans, for the first quarter of an hour, Stephens had beautifully peered through the peephole at intervals of one minute or so. Now, the, on the other side, the examination was going on. Okay, for the first quarter of an hour, for about 45 minutes, Stephen had beautifully, he kept on peering through the window, through the peephole, after each one minute. Got it? And after that, every two minutes, Remember, Stephen earlier was inside the examination. From there, he was sent out. And when he came out, he kept on looking inside after every one minute. And afterwards, after 45 minutes, he would keep, keep inside after every two minutes. At 10.45 a.m., everything was still all right as he looked through the peephole once more. So the examination started at 9.20, you all remember? Examination started at 9.20 and the examination will be over at 11 o'clock, I guess. And at 10.45, everything was all right. It took four or five seconds, no more. What was the point? So at 10.45, what Stephen saw, there was something, you know, wrong. Something was fishy. He thought, like, what was the point? It was always more or less the same. Each time, same thing was there. What was that? Let's see. Evans, his pen between his lips, sat staring straight in front of him towards the door, seeking. It seemed some sorely needed inspiration from somewhere. Each time, whenever Stephens would peep inside, he would find Evans looking straight in front of him only. And each time his pen would be between his lips and he would be straight looking at the door or towards him. And it appeared as if he was seeking some inspiration from somewhere. And opposite him, McLeary seated slightly askew from the table now. And each time uh, McLeary was sitting exactly opposite to him, but this time he was sitting a little 
you know he was his position had changed a little from the table now his face in semi profile his hair as stephens had noticed earlier immaturely clipped pretty closely to the scalp okay so mcleary now was sitting a little you know now mcleary's position had changed a little bit from his original seat he might have changed his seat not changed he might he, he seems to have moved a little away from his seat and secondly uh, his face in semi profile his hair stephens had also noticed it earlier also that his hair had been like cut they had it had been cut very closely to the scalp very short hair it had got mcleary had got very crop cut you can say but it was not cut very nicely so mcleary had got crop cut his eyes behind the pebble lenses peering short sighted so he was wearing uh, pebble lenses right uh pebble lenses peering short sightedly at the church times his right index finger hooked beneath the narrow clerical collar the right index finger of uh, mcleary was uh, uh, was at his collar and the fingers of the left hand the nails meticulously manicured slowly stroking the short black beard and with his uh, left hand fingers he was stroking his beard got it so at this time you know this man mcleary he seemed a little uh, you know his movements or his gestures were a little different what what gestures were there number one he was looking at the church times as usual his one finger was checking the collar and the other finger was checking the beard at 10:50 am the receiver crackled to life and the governor realized he had almost forgotten evans for a few minutes at 10:50 again the phone call was there and the governor all of a sudden the governor also like realized that he had forgotten evans for a few minutes because there was no noise at all he wants please sir so evans was speaking something now uh, please sir would you mind if i put a blanket around me around my, uh, around me shoulder sir it's a bit parky in here isn't it so now governor heard he wants asking for a blanket because it was very cold there he wants there is one on me bunk here sir be quick about it mcleary said no no don't do, do your work that there is silence at 10:51 am stephens was more than a little surprised to see a gray regulation blanket dra draped around ivon's shoulders and he frowned slightly and looked at the examinee more closely at 10:51 stephens saw that ivon's had the blanket around him right and he frowned slightly and looked at the examinee more closely so this stephens looked at uh, uh, looked at him more closely but ivans the the pen still between his teeth was staring just as vacantly as before blankly beneath a blanket should stephens report the slight irregularity anything at all fishy had and jackson said he looked through the peep hole once again and even as he did so ivans pulled the dirty blanket more closely to himself was he planning a sudden batman leap to suffocate mcleary in the blanket don't be daft daft me silly there was never any sun on this side of the prison no heating either during the summer months and it could get quite chilly in some of the cells stephens decided to revert to his earlier every minute observation so stephens found something fishy in the gestures of ivans the way he had uh, draped the blanket around him the way he was making it even tighter so these things made stephens become a bit uh, you know doubtful and he wanted to uh, report to jackson about it but there and then he realized that it was really very cold 
and in this cold weather if he was having the blanket like this then there is nothing unusual so again he avoided again he ignored the doubt right this is what the this is where the authorities always get misled okay now the point was like why was evans given a blanket though this even uh, stephens will also make out like maybe this uh, under this blanket this person evans might be planning to escape like a uh, escape like anything but even then he ignored that doubt also that was too much at 11:20 am the receiver once more crackled across the silence of the governor's office and mcleary informed evans that only 5 minutes remained at 11:20 what happened the receiver once more crackled across the silence of the governor's office and mcleary informed evans that only 5 minutes remained the examination had started at 9:25 and at 11:25 it will be over and at 11:20 just 5 minutes before the conclusion of the paper the phone again rang so mcleary was mcleary informed evans that only 5 minutes were left the examination was almost over now but something still gnawed away quietly in governor's mind he reached for the phone once more so at 11:22 am jackson shouted along the corridor to stephens the governor wanted to speak with him at 11:22 there was a phone for jack stephens which stephens the one whose duty was to keep inside after every one minute now the last 3 minutes were left and then he got a call so now this jackson will not be stephens will not be able to see inside uh, during these 3 minutes now hari man stephens picked up the phone's apprehensively and listened to the rapidly spoken orders stephens himself was to accompany mcleary to the main prison gates understood stephens personally was to make absolutely sure that the door was locked on evans after mcleary had left the cell understood understood so what was the order given to stephens children remember one thing that stephen was a newly recruited official in this department okay he was a newly recruited official jackson was a senior now stephen was given the order that he had to escort mcleary out of the oxford prison and it is uh, stephens who had to make sure that evans is locked up before he takes mcleary with him so now mcleary stephens was feeling proud of himself that he has been given the vip duty so at 1122 jackson shouted along the this we have done stephens personally was to make absolutely sure that the door was locked on evans after mcleary had left the cell understood at 1125 am the governor heard the final exchanges mcleary stop writing please mcleary put your sheets in order and see they are correctly numbered scraping of chairs and tables thank you very much sir all right was it not too bad good mr stephens very loud good mr stephens so he calls out mr stephens the governor heard the door clang for the last time the examination was over how did he get on do you think asked stephens as he walked beside mcleary to the main gates so when mcleary okay so the mcleary is being escorted by stephens to the main gates from here we will continue tomorrow from page number 81 we will continue